Good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. Uh, as you take your seats, no, I've been feeling, uh, parang it's been, the, the weather has improved lately, no? Have you, you noticed that, no? Lumalamig, no? Tama ba? Or may lagnat lang ako? No? <laughs> Hindi naman, okay. It's been cold lately, and uh, and so it's time for us to actually want to stay at home. There's so much parties going on, there's so much celebrations, but one of the things that really allows me to rest is actually to watch movies. No, ito, it's one of the things that I love to do. And because of Disney+, Plus, I've been trying to watch all the Marvel movies since the start. No, How many of you have been watching the Marvel movies again and again and again? Meron ba? Have you experienced that? No. Yan. So, meron pong tatlo. Ewan ko kung ano pong pinapanood ninyo. No? Kung probinsyano pa rin ba. No? Naka-move on na tayo doon. I've been watching all the movies since Iron Man 1. And so, I'm now at... Last night, I watched Guard, Guardians of the Galaxy 1. No? And it's funny that we watch these old movies, especially the Marvel movies, with the same uh, desire to watch. No? Excited pa rin ako, even though I know the ending. You know what I'm saying? Even though we know that in the end, Thanos will win. No. Hindi ko natapos yung... <laughs> but really, when we watch movies like this, when we watch it for the second time, we know the ending. But it's still good. It's still exciting. We, uh, nakakatawa, no? I still watch the end credits. I wait for it. No? And I still watch it. I get excited for the next. And so I hope you guys journey with me as we talk about Marvel again no? for the next coming months. <laughs> Malayu pa po tayo, and dami pa palang movies, no? But the reason why I shared this is when I was watching this Guardians of the Galaxy last night, I know the ending, and as you know also the ending, I realized that it's also like Christmas. We know that it's the coming of Jesus as we celebrate it, but we also know the ending. I hope you know the ending. The ending of the life of Christ here on earth is he will be nailed on the cross. And it's a good reflection for all of us. Why? Because we need to go through that story again and again. The reason why we celebrate Christmas here in our nation starting September. But unfortunately, we forget the reason no, why we celebrate this. And Christmas is actually a time to not just be reminded of the life of Christ. No, It's not just the birth of Christ, but it's also his death and resurrection. That's the whole story. Because it couldn't happen that he just came he also had to die. And so it's weird that we talk about Jesus' birth, but it's only complete when we also talk about his death and resurrection. And this is really the perfect time to talk about this. And dami pong nakakalimot, no? Of the message of Christmas. And it's not just about Jesus giving living on earth, but it's also about his dying. And so the question I want to answer today is, why would Jesus have to die for me? Bakit ba kailangan mamatay ni Lord para sa akin? No? It's a question that a lot of people probably know the answer. But really, if you really think about it, Lord, why would you send your son to die for me? Our text for today is found in John chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 29 to 34, but we'll just focus on one verse today. Um, John 1, 29 starts with this. The next day, he saw Jesus coming towards him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descending and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and I have borne witness that this is the Son of God. It's actually a story narrated by this time, no? John the Baptist's point of view. This is his account of the coming of Christ. He is the one who is speaking, and he's the one the next day he saw Jesus coming, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. This is a very familiar verse. This is something that we always hear. But I'd like to focus on verse 29, just that one simple verse. And we'll try to unpack that and learn why really well, Jesus had to die for you and me. He says, Behold, the Lamb of God. I like to start that no, with the word behold. 
Do you know what the word behold means? Are you familiar with that word? Behold. What does it mean? Behold. It actually means to take close attention, to focus, to pay, to, pay, uh, to give that full focus on what it is that we need to behold. Behold is something that we need to learn this Christmas. Why? Because we are all beholding something. Meron po lahat tayong behold. And most of the time, it's the noisiest thing that we behold our minds and our hearts to. I want to ask you today, what are you beholding this Christmas? What is your focus this Christmas? You know, the most loudest in the coming few days, especially tomorrow, is what people are beholding. It's that shouting words, four-letter word. You know that four-letter word? Sabi niya, Jeez, kulang. It's that word, sale. How many of you are not yet done with your Christmas shopping? Grabe. Nakat- or hindi lang talaga kayo magre-regalo this year. <laughs> no? I heard there's this gift that you, ano daw, bro, meron daw sa US. You get, uh, yung, ano tawag dito, yung results ng antigen. Tapos positive. Para daw dun sa mga ayaw makita yung family nila. Yun yung gift mo. Oh, positive. Okay. Anyway. What do we behold? What are the things that we behold this Christmas? Tomorrow is one of the best days of the year. 12-12. <laughs> Sabi, uy, 12-12, What are you beholding this Christmas? I've heard this new term this Christmas. They call it the revenge travel. Meron ba ang aalis? No? Have you heard of that word, revenge travel? People will really go out. And I'm all, I'm all for vacation, I'm all for reunion. But really, Christmas is really a time to behold what it really means. Do we behold Christ during this Christmas? What is the loudest word or thing that we are beholding our hearts and our minds to? Some of you might not be... Uh, there was a season in my life, December and January was one of the um, most important year. Every other year was the most important year. Why? It was the time I renew ako ng plan. December. Every other year, di ba? 24 months. So, ang binibuhold ko every other year is the next phone. Parang ganon. So, hindi ko year today eh. Next year pa ulit eh. <laughs> What are we beholding? No, and I want to say this as we really try to understand this text. Christmas is a time to once again behold Jesus. It's once again for us to focus on Him. The reason why we have all this, the Christmas lights, the Christmas carols, we take family photos, you know, we give gifts, we bake, we have reunions. It's all about Jesus. And this is the reason for this season. He says, behold the lamb. You know this word, the lamb, or the lamb, as a, an, an, an animal for the Israelites, is a very familiar image or picture. It's something that they are used to. You know? They always talk about this. It's something that they do. The lamb. Why? When John was seeing it, imagine you know, John the Baptist, as he first sees Jesus Christ walking, he says, the lamb. You know what image that he was saying? Sabi niya, eto na. In other words, no, what he was saying is, the sacrifice is coming. Imagine, we are just starting the ministry of Christ no, in the story, and he's saying, mamamatayan. <laughs> he will be sacrificed. That was what he was saying. The lamb. The lamb. The purpose of the lamb in the vocabulary and culture of the Israelites, the purpose is really to die. No, for someone else. To die as a sacrifice of sins for the benefit of others. This was his intro of the life of Jesus. Sabi niya, behold the Lamb of God. In the message version, he says, here is God's Passover Lamb. And so it goes back to the time of Genesis until Exodus. And so as you try to understand what really a lamb, when you say, pag may nakita kayong Israelite, no, don't tell, uy, the lamb, no, ma-offend yun, parang papapatay mo na siya. No? 
the lamb was actually from the history of the Passover. They celebrate the Passover every year. And so each family, if you're representative of the family, would actually have to get a lamb to be sacrificed for your sins. So it was a common thing to get forgiveness from a holy God, to kill a lamb. And so what is the Passover? As you remember, do you remember the story of Moses when he went to Pharaoh? Ito po yun, no? And during that, sobrang tigas ng ulo ng Pharaoh, ayaw palisin yung mga tao ni Lord, the Israelites, he actually allowed a plague to happen. And the plague was, sabi niya, all the firstborn will actually die. So hindi naniniwala si Pharaoh. And so as God fulfilled this judgment over the the ones who enslaved the people of God. What happened was, sabi ni Lord, he gave instructions. Get a one-year-old lamb or goat, no? Katayin, katayin ba yung term? Paduguin nyo, katayin kasi kakainan. You know? <laughs> and so you sacrifice the lamb, you get the blood, and then you paint over the door of your house, no? You paint with the blood so that when judgment comes, when God sees that there is blood over the door, he will pass over. Yung po yung tradition na yun. And so every year, God commanded his people to offer a lamb so that they will remember that Passover, that God did not judge them. God spared them from death. Ito po yung kwentong yun. And so every time, every year, imagine this, no? Every year, we will have to sacrifice a lamb so that God would forgive our sins. And this is something that they did every single celebration of the Passover. And we'll see that now in Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. So, to be passed over from death and judgment. And so, ito po yung language ni John. Sabi niya, no? Behold the Lamb. It means ito na ang sacrifice. But not just any kind of Lamb. What we need to understand is the lamb was a different kind of lamb. It's not the regular lamb that they sacrifice every year. He says the lamb of God. The lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He says the lamb. Why did it have to be a lamb coming from God? Think about it. Bakit kailangan na yung lamb ni God ang maging perfect sacrifice? Think about it right now. Why? Do you want to know why? Because our lambs will never be enough. We have our own sacrifices to the Lord every year. Sometimes we sacrifice something to the Lord. It's something that is, uh, when you say sacrifice, it's something that is from us that we have to give up to the Lord. You know, it's a sacrifice of something part of us. And unfortunately, our lambs will never be enough. What are the lambs that we have that we sacrifice to the Lord? That's why he said, the Lamb of God. Galing to kay Lord, tong taong to na isa sacrifice para sa mga buhay nating lahat. It is the ultimate perfect sacrifice that is only qualified to forgive our sins once and for all. I, have, I hope you understand by now that for them, forgiveness was achievable. Nung time ni Lord, no? nung time nito. Why? Kailangan lang nilang mag-sacrifice. Ang problema, as you know, just like the Israelites, just like you and me, we may have sinned, and we know this, in our sinful nature, we will still continue to sin. How many of you sinned this morning? Raise your hand. Thank you. Meron po tayong anes, dalawa. <laughs> We know this, that even though we want to live the right way, the righteous way, as God has made us righteous, we know this, we are still sinful. No? We are still, um, ito po ang ating ano, reality that we are made righteous, but at the same time, there's that battle between the flesh and the spirit. And so, as we know this, ito po ang the lamb that will take away all and forever our sins, the Lamb of God. I remember uh, just recently I've been watching mga highlights of events, of church events, and I saw one of our churches have their uh, volunteer appreciation day. I think it was Victory Fort. And there's this guy who was interviewed, 
in interview siya, sabi sa kanya, uh, so why do you volunteer? And how many of you are volunteers? Raise your hand. Palakpakan po natin ang ating mga volunteers. Thank you for continually carrying the load with us. You know, we are probably mga, mga 80% run by volunteers. And so to the volunteers, ito po yung sinanong, why do you volunteer? Ano ang sagot? Ano kaya yung sagot niya? Sabi niya, why do you volunteer? And I was expecting, unfortunately, you know, I was expecting the wrong answer. Sabi ko, siguro sabi niya, ito, ito. But this is what he said, that's why I'll never forget. Sabi niya, alam mo, sobrang buti ng Panginoon sa akin. He's so good. That's why I'm doing this, kasi this is the only thing I can give to him. I'm doing this kasi sobrang buti niya sa pamilya ko, and that's why I serve him. Wow. You know, to give time of, from us to sacrifice. If we have the right heart, it's great. But a lot of times, even I, no, at times, no, do something for the Lord and expect something in return. Lord, ginagawa ko to para sa ito. Lord, ginagawa ko to kasi para mapatawad mo ko. It's the wrong heart of doing a sacrifice to the Lord. I remember when I was still young, um, when... when I think it was my first salary. I remember my mom telling me, Uy, magpakain ka sa simbahan, no? We were living in front of, kaya medyo parang ano po ako eh, St. Francis, di ba? <laughs> yung bahay po na, ito po yung bahay namin, yung gate, yung simbahan, nasa tapat namin, yung chapel, nandun sa tech booth. So, every Sunday, maaga po ako gumigising kasi naririnig ko yung, ano, yung, ay hindi, bluetooth na kami nun eh. Oo, yung kalembang. Nung, uh, so pag, tang Gising ako. Tapos tulog ulit ako. <laughs> so, I, I remember my mom during my first salary, sabi niya sa akin, Uy, mag, ano ka, magpa-feeding program ka. Kasi, ano, bumawi ka kay Lord. Yeah, that was the statement that she told me. Bumawi ka kay Lord. So, nagpa-feeding program ako. I remember, nung nagpa-feeding program ako doon sa school, doon, yung Sunday school, konti lang naman yung mga kids, no? I think mga 40. And it was just Zesto and, you know, Marie. <laughs> Antipid ko, you know? Kain kayo, ha? Sige, namnamin nyo. Uh, Marie lang, you know? Baby pa yung pinakain. <laughs> Magpapalunch ang kapitbahay, Marie. Anyway, and so... I remember that feeling of, ano, yung, oh Lord, ah, ginawa ko yan para sa iyo. Mayroon bang ganun sa inyo? Yung parang ako, sa mga ugali. Yung, Lord, ah, ano yan? So yung mga kasalanan ko, quits na tayo. I had that mindset, no, growing up. And sometimes I believe I still carry that with me today. Sometimes I do this and say, Lord, uh, ano to, ah, parang X deal. Lord, if I do this, Will you forgive me for the things I've done last week? Parang laging bumabawi yung mentality. No? And I realized, all my sacrifices are not enough. Hindi naman sinabi ni John the Baptist, the Lamb of Dave, that will take away his sins. The Lamb of Francis, the Lamb of Josh. Ay, Josh. <laughs> Jason. Josh. Diba? It's not about our lambs. It will never be enough. And that's why there's that emphasis on behold the Lamb of God. God sent this man to be a sacrifice for you and me. That was his message. The Lamb of God, the only one qualified for our sins. I want to emphasize that. Our sacrifices will never be enough. We need someone. No? We need someone who is willing and able to die for us. That's my personal reflection. No? Lord, why did you need to die for me? Because without Christ being the Lamb of God, we won't be able to say, Lord, you have forgiven me. Imagine, every single year, meron pupunta dito. Pastor, saan namin kakatayin yung Lamb? Kasi ito yung mga naging kasalanan ko last year. Sige, paduguin mo muna dun sa CR, tas bigay mo nalang yung dugo. Imagine life without the Lamb of God. Imagine, no? Why would John the Baptist talk about this image? Because God needed to redefine what sacrifice means. Before it used to be our doing, good works. Now it's because of a gift from God, His Son. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away 
the sins of the world. Let's take note of that, no? that takes away the sins of the world. Why did John not say, the one who forgives sin? Why did he not say, behold the Lamb of God that forgives your sins? I actually was stuck in that part no, of the text. For a good an hour, I ko, binasa. Why? Because they knew how to forgive their sins because of the works. <laughs> Alam nila yon, no? And so John was focusing on the reality of how God forgives us. Why? Because when God forgives us, sabi niya, no, He will take away our sins. What does that mean? Ano ibig sabihin nun? And now, I want you to do, we're gonna do a exercise. Meron po tayo activity. I want you to close your eyes. And now, I want you to think of that one sin that you've been trying to forget. But it seems like it's been bothering you. Bumabalik lang talaga. Merong laging nandyan, no? It's something that you've di- you did that you wish you did not and you wish sana hindi, kung kaya mo lang balikan, sana hindi talaga maging ganun. But it's just that one sin. Can you open your eyes and look up? As you picture that one sin that you've been trying to shrug off, yung bumabalik, no? Yung talagang lagi kang ano, okay, pwede nyo na pong open yung eyes nyo. Gising na po kayo. Uh, balik na po tayo dito. And now I want you to picture what Christ has done. Sabi niya, no? Jesus, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And this is, he was talking about Jesus. What does it mean for God to take away the sins of the world? Number one, Psalms 103, verse 12, it says, He has taken our sins as far as from the east is from the west. I like that. No? Sabi niya, it will never meet. God brings our sins far away from us. That's the first. What God is saying is that no matter what your sin is, not only has He forgiven you, He actually brings it farthest from you. The other day I was in a wedding, wedding of my cousin that I officiated, and I saw a relative, no? So, si tinawag ko siya. Eh, may, alam niyo yung malakas yung, ano, yung, ang tag dito? Tililing ba yun? Hindi, yung volume nung, ano, nung speaker. Okay, so, thank you. So, I was calling, uy! Eh, palayo siya ng... Ba- Tapos ako na yung, alam niyo yung feeling na ikaw na yung nahihiyan tumatawag kasi hindi ka naman naririnig. Tapos lahat ng tao nakatingin sa'yo. Alam niyo yan? Ganon yung feeling, ang sama, no? Tapos lumalayo lang siya. You know, I realized, the farther you get from someone, the more that they will not hear. No? The farther that they get, kahit ano pang lakas ng sigaw mo, it will not, it, wala, hindi ka na maririnig, ang layo na. No? And that's what God does with that one sin. He will bring it as far as you can imagine so that the enemy cannot shout, Hoy, ginawa mo to dati! To the point that, ganito na lang naririnig mo. Ha? Huh? Imagine, no? ginaganon mo na yung demonyo, no? Alam mo, dati, hindi ka tumarinig eh. God brings our sins as far away from us. He would bring it as far away from us so that it won't bother us. And that's why when he said, you are a new creation, imagine that. It means the past has no longer a hold on you. Another picture that he says is in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12, For I will be merciful towards your iniquities, and I will remember your sins no more. Oh, Lord, thank you that not only you bring our sins far from us, but you actually forget about our sin. God remembers our sin no more. There's this time, um, I guess mga three weeks ago, ah, kailan tayo nag, ano, nung when we went up to Baguio, no? November 1 break, no? so we went up. Unfortunately, I had a meeting the day, the, the day before we were about to go home. So, uh, we went down, parang we, we got home 4 a.m. 4 a.m. May meeting ako sa EN, no? ng 9 o'clock. E coding ako. So I had to wake up at 6 o'clock, went home 4 o'clock, took a shower, slept, woke up at 6, 15, slept again, snooze, <laughs> 6.30, and then went to fort. I was at the fort 7 o'clock, killing time until 9 o'clock. And so, Pastor Dave, guess what? This meeting was a project of the entire movement 
it's the victory membership standard. So it's something that, you know, it's really an important meeting. Ang mga nandun, yung mga long-time pastors from the provinces, everyone was there. I think it were mga 20 kami dun. And I was tasked to also help them out. So guess what? Ah, antok na antok talaga ako. Sobrang antok da antok talaga ako. As in, kinakausap nila ako may lag. Ha? Huh? Oh, sige. Ito pa ang problema. Yung laptop na naka-project sa screen sa akin. So, nakakita ka dyan. Nag-message si Pam. How are you? Ang inopen kong app, yung nasa laptop. In front of 20 pastors who have been in the movement for decades, I said, Sleepy, he he he. Sabi ng bosko, Sleepy? Sagan yan ako. Sabi ko, Lord, kunin mo na. Alam mo, 5'7 ako, pero feeling ko 5'3 na lang ako noon. So parang, Lord, kung meron mang kukuha, kunin mo, o kahit konting saglit lang. Lord, kung meron mang miracle, makakalimutan nila. <laughs> Alam nyo, it's one of the most embarrassing moments of my life <laughs> in front of those pastors. And until today, when I see them, Feeling ko nga yung mga thoughts in my mind, wala na kaya akong trabaho bukas. In the most embarrassing moment of your life, in front of a holy God, Lord, sana hindi ko ginawa na kaya. You know what God tells you? Kinalimutan ko na yun. Hindi ko na naalala yun. Wala na sa akin. In the one thing that you've done, Okay, Lord, walang condemnation. Whenever I go to God today, Lord, I need this. No? Ngayon, pag pumunta ako kay Pastor John, Pastor John, ay hindi, okay na po ako. <laughs> Parang ayoko na po. Sleepy ka, di ba? You know, in front of a holy God, the Bible says, He does not remember our sin no more. Wow. And so He looks at us as if nothing happened because for him wala na burado na yon no? the lord says i will be merciful towards you and i will remember your sins no more another description of what it means that god would bring our sins far away for us no who takes it away from us colossians chapter 2 verse 13 he says, you were dead because of your sins, because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and he took it away by nailing it to the cross. I like that. That's my third illustration of what it means that God would take away our sins. God has nailed our sins on the cross. And let me tell you a story. No, nakalimutan ko magpaalam, Alvin. But because best friend tayo, I will share this very wonderful story of Roger. And so nasa Baguio po nga kami. At ang one of my bestest friends, Alvin. Nandito po siya ngayon, magagalit siya sa akin mamaya. Bumaba po, so we were staying in our ano, in the place. Bumaba po siya sa kotse, no. Ready na ba kayo? Mat- malalim to, theologically. Ha? Bumaba siya sa kotse. May kinuha siya dun sa Starex, tito. So, kinukuha. Ano ba kinukuha mo? Basta may kinukuha siya. Ito po ang nangyari. Behold! Kinagat siya ng aso. Rawr! Ha! Sabi, sure! Yun lang narinig namin. Sabi niya lang, huh! Narinig niyo yun, ha? Okay. Normal na da araw. <coughs> Sabi niya, Ano? Um, ano sa ano yung word niya? Na scratch ako ng aso. Ha? Huh? Patingin. 
Yung scratch yung may pangil na nakagano'n. <laughs> Lahat kami, hindi ba kinigat? Hindi, scratch lang yan. Uh, so anyway, so sabi namin, paano ba nangyari? Sabi niya, kasi kalahati ng katawan ko nasa Starex. Tapos yung kalahati ng katawan ko nasa baba. Hindi ko nakita may aso, kinigat niya ako. So sabi niya sa kanya, bro, kung aso ka, ano purpose sa aso? Bantay. Kung nakita ng malalanggal yun, nakalahati ng katawan mo nasa Starix, tapos kalahati na sa labas, matatakot talaga yun. No? So kinagat siya. So we went through the, nagpa-injection kami. After yung pa-injection, uh, best friend na sila ni Roger. Ang pangalan po ng aso namin, Don Roger. So, tinanong namin siya nung gabi, Kamusta? Sabi ni Alvin, Urf! Yeah. <laughs> you know, after that, there was so much fear in the house. Oh, sino ba baba? <laughs> So, oh, no, 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 check nyo, check nyo kung nakatali yung aso. Ganun, yun lagi. Nakatali ba yung aso? Oh, no, no, si Roger. No. So, okay pa naman si Roger ngayon. Buhay pa siya. Hindi naman siya kinatay. But I told the caretaker, sabi ko, June, make sure nakatali yung aso. Kasi delikado yan eh. Baka may makagat pa yan. You know, with that reminder na make sure nakatali yung aso, alam mo na realize ko, kahit gaano pa katapang yung aso, pag nakatali yan, hindi yan, hindi kanyang kayang lapitan. Right? And so, no matter how big the sin is in your life, when God said, He is already, it is already nailed on the cross, it will never bother you. Sin is like that. Yes, it's been done in the past. But its job by the enemy is to remind you, di ba ginawa mo ko dati? Ginawa mo ko dati. So gawin mo pa rin ngayon. But the reminder is, Lord, you've nailed that on the cross. And so kung anong nakapako, hindi-hindi na yan pakakawalan ni Lord. Our sins have been nailed on the cross. What John the Baptist was saying about Jesus is this, Behold, Tignan nyo, the Lamb of God, the one who will take your sins away from you, forgive you, nail it on the cross, and it will never bother you. That is the picture of true forgiveness that God wants to bring. Why? Because if it was our lambs, what happens? Sure ba talaga tayo? Tinatawad tayo ni Lord. If it is our sacrifices, talaga bang papatawarin niya tayo? Lord, grabe, no? imagine, no? if we would have to sacrifice a real lamb every time we did something, imagine how much lambs you would sacrifice. And John the Baptist was saying, He has come, the one and only who can and is willing to be that ultimate sacrifice for us. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. You know, I tried to rewrite this verse to make it personal for all of us. And if there's one message that I want you to bring home, it's this. No? If you can read it with me, it actually says, Behold, the Lamb of God who took away my sin in this world. This is who Christ is, and this is the message of Christmas. Lord, when you sent him his mission, yes, he did teach, he did cast out demons, he healed the sick, but you know the mission of Christ when he came on earth, even before coming, was to die for you and me. Ito po ang ultimate mission ni Lord and he fulfilled it. And that's why what John the Baptist was saying is this, behold, he will die for you. This man will die for you. He has come to save you from our, from our sins. I'd like you to see this picture, and this, I always show this picture of this lamb who's been sacrificed. Imagine you know, a one-year-old lamb who's been um, cut, no? pinaduguyan until its last breath. And I would always say this illustration because Unlike other animals, sabi nila, a lamb is not, hindi, naman, hindi niya alam why he's being slaughtered. No? Sasama lang yan sa slaughterhouse. Unlike goats, they're very noisy. Ang goat, hilain, kausapin mo lang, sasagot na, di ba? Pag, she, nah, parang lahat, di ba? 
Pero itong lamb, sasama yan, it would actually accompany you that even to the point of being sacrificed, according to them, it wouldn't speak. Kaya nga, di ba, it's true when they say silence of the lambs. Until point of death, as if it was willing. And I like to give you a picture of what Isaiah was talking about, this kind of lamb, the perfect lamb. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Grabe, no? A willing sacrifice that is willing to be sacrificed for the benefit of others. And this is what Christ has done. He was so much willing to die for you and me. Grabe lang na picture na yan, no? Parang Lord, why would you die for my sins? Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And so, you know, this story is a very important story in the Bible because this is the story that would redefine sacrifice for the people of God, for the Israelites. Imagine, ang sinasabi ni John the Baptist, you don't need to do your sacrifices anymore. It was mind-blowing for them. Why? Hindi na nila kailangan bumili. Hindi na kailangan alagaan. It had to be a perfect lamb. The effort and the the time to be consumed, to sacrifice this lamb every year was so difficult. What John the Baptist was saying is, you don't need to do that anymore. All you have to do is receive this lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. All we need to do is receive and believe in him. And so, as I try to answer that question in my personal devotion and in preparing this preaching, why would Jesus die for me? Try to ask that question. Why would Jesus die for me? I believe this is my answer as he revealed this truth to me. Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice for me because he loves me. It's the love of Christ that would actually compel someone to send his one and only son and say, be the sacrifice for my children because I love them. And that's why John 3.16 would make sense today more and more as we try to understand the Lamb of God. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Imagine that. God's desire is for us to not perish. He wants to save you and me. You know, this message is maybe for some of you a familiar story for Christmas or even for the Holy Week. Maybe you've heard of this, but you know what? There are more people in our lives who have not heard the reason for the Lamb of God. Mas madami pong taong kailangan makarinig nitong message na to. And this Christmas is your opportunity, all our opportunity, to allow them to behold Jesus as the Lamb of God. Pag meron tayong feast, no? we point them back. Well, si Lord lang to. We are all here because of Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice for me because he loves me. Why don't we stand as we respond in worship? I'm going to pray. Before that, can I just ask everyone to close their eyes and just allow the words from John 1, 29 to just sink deep in our hearts. I'm going to read that again. John Chapter 1, verse 29. It says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I believe God wants to remind all of us today that He has already forgiven you. 
that He was already sacrificed for you. And our response is, Lord, salamat for reminding us of our sinfulness. Lord, for reminding us that we cannot offer any sacrifice that would atone for our past, from our sins, from our brokenness. But Lord, because of your love for us, you sent Jesus to die for us. Thank you, Lord, that you are a loving God. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. Thank you, Lord, that you have reminded us that our sins have been taken away. Lord, as far as the east is from the west, you have made us once again as white as snow, Lord God. Lord, thank you for your mercy, Lord God, for us, that you don't remember our sins no more. Thank you, Lord, that you have canceled the record, our record of our sins. And thank you, Lord God, that all our sins are nailed on the cross. Lord, we pray that our sins will never bother us again, that we will move forward because we are a new creation in you. The old has gone and the new has come. Lord, we receive you once again in our lives. Allow us, Lord, to behold you. Allow us to focus on you this Christmas. Allow us to know for certain that you are the message of Christmas and nothing else. Lord, give us this courage to be able to point people back to you. Thank you, Lord God. Before we worship, I just want to pray for this specific group of people. If, as I've started the preaching, I was talking about the word behold. Now, if that's you and you feel like you have behold something else this Christmas. I believe Jesus is inviting you once again to focus on Him. If that's you, you've been distracted all these days. Parang it's all about the rush, the trying to catch up, making sure I buy all the gifts, making sure I attend all the parties, making sure I book the right venue for the vacation for the family. You're so consumed about all this. You know, the peace of God is with you and you'll be able to do that. But it starts with focusing on Him first. Behold Christ first. If that's you, just raise your hand and we're going to pray for grace. We're going to pray for His mercy towards us. Yes, Lord. Yes, God, I see these hands. Lord, as we raise our hands today, Lord, thank you that we will fix our focus once again on you. Lord, thank you that it's not about the things that we want to accomplish, but it's only about you. Thank you, Jesus. We go back to you once again today. Lord, I know there are a lot of concerns, but all this you know as well. And so, Lord, be the one to give them their breakthrough as they behold you once again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Another group of people that I want to pray for is you feel like ikaw yon, no? Yung parang you feel like sin has been like that dog, been trying to attack you once again. Or sin is like that shameful thing that you've done and feeling mo, God still looks at you as someone who has done this and that. And you can't seem to go to God. If that's you, I just want to pray for you. Just raise your hand. If there's that sin that's been bothering you and you know that God has forgiven you, that even raising your hand is parang an act of parang nakakaya, I believe this is your moment today. The Lord wants to free you from your sin. The Lord wants to remove that sin from you from the past. He has forgiven you already. So if that's you, just raise your hand high up so that we can acknowledge, yes, Lord. Lord, thank you that you are a God who has forgiven your children. And Lord, we declare this, Lord God, that the sins of the past will not bother my brothers and sisters because you have paid that penalty already. You have nailed that on the cross. And Lord, it won't bother them anymore. Thank you, Lord God, that you have forgotten that sin. Lord, silence the voice of the lies in their minds and in their hearts. Thank you, Lord God, that you are a faithful God. Lord, thank you. 
for reminding us that we are forgiven. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Lord, we receive that once again. Free us, Lord God, from the lies. Allow us to move in the truth that you are a forgiving God, that you love us so much. Thank you, Lord. Let's worship God. Clap our hands to God. Can we stretch out our hands right now? Lord, we respond to that message and remember indeed, God, that it's you who cleansed us, who made us whole, who forgave us of our sins. And Lord, even right now, I declare even for my brothers and sisters that as we behold the Lamb of God that took away our sins in Christ, you would expand our hearts. Even today, there may be some things that God is stretching you to do. Maybe that's forgiveness, forgiving other people. Mahirap, mahirap. But as we behold the forgiveness we have received, my prayer right now, O oh God, is that we are able to forgive as well. And Lord, as we reflect on, as we behold the generosity of God that He gave His life for us, may it also stretch us, stretch us Lord God, to extend ourselves to other people. Lord, right now, as we step out this room, may we reflect. As we behold you, 
How can we stretch that and express that love, that forgiveness to other people? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and grant you abundance of peace and steadfast love all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give God praise. God bless all of you and see you next week. Oh, hi guys. Welcome to our Victory Greenhouse YouTube channel. Now, if this is your first time here, we're glad that you have joined us today. But if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Now, if you are here, we hope that today's message will bless you, it'll encourage you, it'll speak life to you. But more than the message itself, we would like to encourage you to be part of our church community. And you can get connected through discipleship. And we want to invite you to be part of one of our victory groups. If you're interested, please do let us know. You can comment, you can message us, you can text us, whatever. Just let us know how you want to get connected so that we can plug you in. Now, as we get ready for today's message, we pray that the Lord will bless you as you listen to the sermon today. God bless you.